Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Alaikum Salaam Allah. Can you please give us more insight on the reason on how come Imam Ali salam was born inside the Kaaba? How come? How come? <laughs> no, I think I can say that, that's that's a Allah has to tell us why that was done. But he represents the heart of Prophet Go back to find out what the holy Kaaba represents. <coughs> it represents the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Imam Ali's light and reality is born from within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and it is a symbol of the futuwa which is the chivalry and noble youth. Noble youth because the innocence of youth. That when the young come towards Islam with good character and masoom that they're perfected, they haven't done things that adults have done, he represents that reality. In the youthful purification and perfection Allah brought the first youth of Islam is Imam Ali and raised in the reality of Islam, raised in the reality of futuwa and chivalry in which to bring people back to their youthful innocence. So that when a person becomes rijal and can be 50, 60 years old, Allah bring them back to be of a youthful innocence. Don't let the hardship of this dunya taint you but to go back to like a childish sort of innocence in which they have good character, love and, uh, and, and a chivalry in which to be very noble characteristics. And that's the way of Imam Ali's training to train people into that reality. So he represents immense, immense realities. And on the Israhi wal Miraj that coming up one of the realities is that Prophet reached within the heights of the heavens and heard a roaring of a lion. And he was so mesmerized and taken back by the extreme power of the roaring of that lion. And that's why we say, Asadullah al-Qalib because the reality is something that Allah has, has dressed upon. As he approached that roaring lion, he asked Sayyidina Jibra'il that, tell me from this reality. He said, this is the reality of your cousin Imam Ali Every time he roars, the angels are coming into existence from his roar. So again, immense lights and blessings upon that reality. And that Allah gave all his favours to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad the holy companions, Ahlul Bayt, these are ancient lights in which Allah wanted to give all these treasures as a treasure to Sayyidina Muhammad I've saved the best of these souls created from your light, I made them all from your nation so that you are the beautific and fragrant nation of my kingdom, inshaAllah. Their names don't come first, their realities came first. So Allah saved the best for the last. Out of all the creation that he made from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad that when, when you make something, you, the base of the building is one thing. But once you build, 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 you're building all of that for what you're about to put onto the top floor and the crown of the building. So the crown of this creation is Sayyidina Muhammad Everything into the Muhammadan kingdom is the best of what Allah has created. The best of saints, the best of companions, the best of family, the best, best of Ahlul Bayt because Allah's love for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad He saved the best for last, inshaAllah. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidi, what is the reality of the dua of the saint of Rajab? Can we read the dua in other months other than Rajab? Sure, any dua can be read all the time. It's in Dua Manzur that we read every day. So, alhamdulillah, that's a, a, a powerful dua. Its words in Naqshbandiya are very important that to admit to ourselves our zulumat, our bad character, and come through the door of humility. 
the Rajab awrad and the etiquette that to be recited through Rajab, read the English or read your language in, in which you understand and contemplate and it's not like any other people, you know. I don't think anybody in, in masjids talk like this, that I'm nothing and if there's two doors I'm coming through the door of disbelief. Admit to Allah, don't come and think uh, I'm a big believer, I'm a great believer, I'm the most amazing believer. But say, Ya Rabbi, don't need to punish me. I'm, if there's two doors, I'm coming through disbelief. What better than Allah say, oh, I'm so happy with you, you came through that door, but no, I really think you, you're a good believer. Let it be for Allah to judge us. So they're teaching for us as you judge yourself that you're nothing. But let Allah determine who's something and who's nothing. So that we don't have pride and arrogance, so their teaching of their prayers are even immensely different than other people's prayers. That we're nothing, we're nothing. And then if, if, if I'm asking, I'm not asking. Anything from me, Ya Rabbi, I'm giving my answer to be from you. That you answer on my behalf, I'm nothing, I'm just like a less than an atom. The dhurya is like a, like a little ant that I'm not putting myself as anything. So all of those beatific praisings are a, a symbol of how the king of saints, king of awliya, how they talk to Allah is in the ocean of nothingness. So by praying and, and reading these du'as as they read them, we're asking to be dressed by the same character in its realities. Anytime you copy the saints and the awliya, the sultan and awliyas, then we're being dressed by their rewards because their nazar is on us because we're repeating what they left for us as an inheritance inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah If anything has one eye in it, does it always mean dajjal or can it be a coincidence? Or if the character's eye is injured, does it matter? No, I wouldn't say everything. Some things are accidental, somebody may get hurt, he's, oh, just look at his dajjal and then beat him up and no, it's not like that. <laughs> no. Everything is a wisdom, there's no answer for everything. So everything has a hikmah and a wisdom and, and to look at things with an understanding that uh, no, that's not, that's not what it is, inshaAllah. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How do we shed off the selfishness in us? By doing selfless acts. So when people are selfish and only think of themselves, then do selfless acts in which you do things where you don't have a reward for yourself and you live a life trying to be selfless. That's why the tariqah is based on khidmat. We don't think that our, our entry into paradise is that we prayed that we fasted, that we gave zakah, that we prayed, we did hajj. That's not my entry into paradise. That was my entry into good character. If I did it right, I would have a very humble character, good character, sort of compassionate for other people and then I would have a sincerity. If I have sincerity then I would ask myself and ask my Lord that, Ya Rabbi want to live a life of service. I read that the companions, all they did was serve Sayyidina Muhammad with their lives, with their lives. There was no life insurance. They put their lives at stake two times a day in their battles at times. So it means that was a life of khidmat. They, they didn't get that title of Sahabi because they made salah, right? So the only noble title that they achieved and why that title can't be achieved by anyone, otherwise there are only who maybe came and prayed more. Why didn't they achieve that title higher than that? And you would, Prophet would have described, well, everybody based on how their amal is. But their nobility and the rank that, that can be achieved by anyone is because of their companionship in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that they lived and died for that reality. As a result Allah locked that nobody, not a saint, not a, anything in creation can achieve that proximity because they served with their physical presence the Muhammadan kingdom and Sayyidina Muhammad so that's, that's immense. So that's the khidmat. If it was anything else and Allah would say, oh if you pray a lot you can be at a higher rank. No, it's not that you're praying and you're zakah, nobody can do these things. 
All those amas were for us to have good character. If we had good character then we would live a life of service inshaAllah and that service is what opens Allah's rahmah and mercy upon us and blessings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah I have a question about keeping yourself hidden. Are we, as we are students on the path and we are still weak and not strong, should we hide our practices from others? Yes. That's why our, all our practices are different than what people understand. They come from the masjid and they see how we pray and they say, oh you people pray very fast because you go there and they do everything to be seen by people, right? So you go somewhere and the wudu station, everybody like they took a hammam, all wet, all their clothes wet, each one wetter than the other person, each one gargling deeper in their throat to clear out their nostrils, their brain cavities, everything to show that they're clean people. Tariqah doesn't teach that. Tariqah teaches quickly wash, don't make a big mess, don't use too much water, don't talk, get out and do your prayers and your salat al wudu. So Tariqah comes and teaches, pray so that not to be identified, not so fast like you're a chicken but you know at a speed enough not to bother the weaker among you where you want to show everybody your how long you can make your salah as if to impress people with your prayers. But then at home you're probably not even praying and that's they try to teach to avoid hypocrisy. That whatever you want to do best to do it hard with Allah You want to pray long and, and hard, alhamdulillah, do it when you're alone, when you can't have any fun of somebody observing you and then pray all night long for Allah it has the most reward. So anything you want to do, do it in sincerity for Allah alone. So that's the, the, the core of tariqah teachings, that don't need to show anyone anything of what we do and sit in a corner of the masjid and keep making zikr and people say, oh my god what are these persons doing? We try not to draw attention to ourselves inshaAllah in anything we do. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa do our daily awrad while sitting in family so that they can also get benefit of light and energy? But that was the other question. That was the question of showing off to them. So if people do that, that you may bring sort of animosity from other people that as soon as everyone's sitting to watch a TV or to talk and socialize, Ya Allah, Ashhadu an la ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashhadu an la ilaha No, look at this guy, there's a mufti sahib is now making us look like this, he's going to make us look bad. So you may open up a lot of animosity that why you're doing your, your practices in front of us and making us feel like we're, we're this deficient and… So again the, with the hikmah, if you're talking about little kids then sure you take your kids on the couch and say, okay ready we're going to do our awrad, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, no problem. But if you're going to your relatives and in-laws and decide you're going to put your feet up and now and start doing all your awrad, <laughs> you may have problems. Or they may not invite you again and you can do that intentionally. <laughs> yeah, so they stop inviting Zishan everywhere. <laughs> you know, all those places you didn't want to go, it's like, oh, I don't want to, I go here, they just talk dunya, 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 then grow your beard. Grow your beard, put a turban on, nobody will invite you tomorrow. <laughs> you don't have to worry about all the discussions that you don't want to enter into. Because, oh that bearded guy again, don't invite him, he's such a <laughs> Debbie Downer. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Alaykum As Salaam wa what can we do if we have lots of pictures of ourselves out in the world from the past possessed by friends and family? Pray that Allah forgive you <laughs> Alhamdulillah for those who grew up in a time before all these cameras. But it's such a difficult era right now and all the kids who are growing up, you know, posting these ridiculous pictures that you know they're going to regret, you know, in 10, 15, 20 years or going to work or getting a job. So it's just, a, it's just a time that we live in that has an extreme difficulty and all we can do is make tawbah that Allah you know to hide whatever is inappropriate that you have out there 
And let Allah sattar begin to hide it and dispose of it and, and make those things to go away inshaAllah. But a difficult time and for the youth of today extremely difficult. How to tell them that these things that you post, you know, you're going to be affected when you go to get work. Because every job now looks at all the social profiles and they want to know what type of person they're hiring and those can have a significant impact on, on what type of career or job a person will get. So we, we pray that Allah sort of guide everybody and, and to, to cover what's inappropriate and wrong and that Allah Qufur Raheem make lots of istighfar inshaAllah and lots of salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.